We're back here, Philly's number one college radio station, WHIP. It is a Thursday, so it's time for the Temple University Football Coaches Show. Let's go out to Edberg Olson Hall right now and welcome in Matt Rule. Coach is coming off his first victory of his career here at Temple with a 33-14 victory. They will play SMU on Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time in Texas. Coach, it's Zach Gelb here. First off, congratulations. How are you? I'm great, and thank you very much, Zach. I appreciate that greatly. Well, we appreciate you getting the first victory on homecoming for the Temple Owls. Uh, what was that feeling like when the Gatorade bath came down on your shoulders and you were walking out of the link with the victory? Uh, you know, it was, uh, it was obviously a great feeling. And, uh, you know, more importantly than anything else, I, I was just uh, I was happy for our, for our players who've worked really hard. I was happy for the, uh, the fans and the students. I thought it was a great atmosphere. And I thought, what better way to, to celebrate a homecoming and an inaugural weekend than to also have a football win. And when you look back, one of the signature moments of that game was when Tyler Medikevich made that one-handed interception. He's really been a phenomenal player for you this year. He has 88 tackles on the season. Can you just talk about what Tyler has meant to this football team? Yeah, hey, you know, he, he's always made a lot of plays. The, the biggest thing I'll say, Zach, is in the last two weeks, uh, Tyler's made a huge leap in terms of uh, his preparation, uh, his effort, and his leadership. And uh, that, that's really what our defense has, has needed. And uh, he, he made a huge step, and, and I think even then, you know, making that interception, that's why I was so excited because he put the work in and it, it showed up on that play. And also when you look at your defense, last year the two marquee players on your defensive side of the ball was Medikevich and also Nate D. Smith. I know Nate didn't start out where he wanted to in training camp as he was uh, deep there on the depth chart, but he's worked his way up, played some linebacker, you moved him to defensive end uh, when you lost Sean Daniels for the season. And you saw Nate D. Smith running down the sidelines in that game as well, getting that fumble recovery. He's just one hard worker, and he comes to play every Saturday. Yeah, you know, Nate, Nate's uh, tremendously talented, and, uh, you know, he, he made the move back to linebacker last week. And, you know, the things that he's had to work on, he finally made a decision that he was going to work on them. He was going to he was become accountable, you know, to play his gap, not just whatever gap he wanted. And the minute he made that change, now now all of a sudden I think we have a playmaker on the inside. And, and those two guys played really well last week, and we'll need them to play well this week again. Head football coach Matt Rule joins us. His Temple Owls are going to play SMU coming up on Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern time is that start, and that game will be broadcasted on ESPN3. And, Coach, P.J. Walker, you put him in late in that Louisville game. Uh, He went into Cincinnati. Uh, Although you didn't win the game, he played pretty well. And then he goes out there against Army. And I know you talked about that. You wanted a quarterback here that could extend the plays, could also throw the ball deep downfield. It looks like you really have something here in P.J. Walker. Hey, you know, P.J. Um, PJ brought, you know, a dynamic component to the offense uh, with his feet and, and with his arm, you know. And, and uh, you know, with, with the emergence of Robbie Anderson and Jalen Fitzpatrick, uh, you know, P.J.'s been able to get the ball down the field and allow those guys to, to hit on the big plays. And so, you know, he has a lot of things he has to work on. You know, he's throwing a pick in every game so far. So he's got to maybe protect the ball a little bit better. But I think, uh, I think the biggest thing is that he's learning from his mistakes and he's making plays at the same time. How tough of a decision was that to put him in the Louisville game and forego his redshirt eligibility? Well, you know, I, I had played him at Fordham, and I had kind of made the decision in the Fordham game. I just said, you know what, at some point we're going to, you know, we're going to need him. And, and you know, we got into that Louisville game, and it just seemed like the time was then and, and the future was now. And, you know, you never want to play a, a, a player before they're ready, especially a quarterback. Uh, so we didn't play him early in the season, you know, kind of as he was still learning. But it became apparent uh, in that Louisville game in the week before that he was coming on strong and that he might have this kind of year. When you look at a quarterback like that, and we've seen it now in the NFL with RG3, Russell Wilson, it's more of a dynamic quarterback position. You want a guy that could sit back in the pocket and throw the ball 40 yards downfield, but you also want a guy now to run. Now, those quarterbacks haven't won Super Bowls yet, but a guy like Colin Kaepernick was a play away from doing that a year ago. But when you have a quarterback like that, health is the biggest concern. Do you talk to PJ at all about when you have to give up your body on some plays and just go out of bounds instead of taking the big hit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think what you're looking for is you're looking for a competitor who's going to try to get every yard possible. But but once they've once they've tried, you know, eliminated the fact, hey, I'm not going to score a touchdown, and hey, I've gotten the first down. 
don't take the next hit, you know, get down. And, and he's still learning that, you know, and, and, and the Cincinnati game, you know, we, we were down in, in, in the red zone and, and uh, he turned the ball over trying to, you know, make a play. And so that's the biggest thing with a young quarterback is teaching him uh, to, to get down, not take hits he doesn't need to take, to protect the football and allow us, you know, to function as a team. And uh, I think he's learning that, but it, but it is it is a challenge as a coach. Matt Rule, the head football coach of the Temple Owls, joins us. Coach, a few more questions right before we let you run. Uh, this is an SMU team. They only have two wins on the season, but they played a Texas Tech team, lost 41-23. Texas Tech is a top-10 team in the nation. They also play the Aggies of A&M as well, and then they went up against Rutgers and went in deep into overtime against them and lost 55-52. to But last week you saw a lot of run on the game tape with Army as they were the number one rushing team in the nation. This week you see the eighth passing team in the nation as they put up 350. 54 yards per game. Uh, what kind of challenge does Garrett Gilbert, the quarterback of SMU, present uh, for your defense? Well, he's an NFL quarterback. You know, I mean, he started in the uh, national championship game as a freshman. I mean, he truly is an NFL quarterback, and they have a great system, great wideouts. June Jones has done it for, for years. Now he's brought in Hal Mummy, and uh, he's tweaked what they do. And, and to be honest, Zach, we haven't proven yet that we can defend the pass. You know, we haven't proven that we can stop this type of offense. So, uh, our work will certainly be cut out for us. We need to get a pass rush, which, which we really haven't gotten yet this year, and we need to cover guys and not turn guys loose. So as much fun as last week was and as much momentum you hope you have coming off a win, um, it's a completely different, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, completely different you know, set of uh, dynamics that we have to go up against. We have to defend the pass for the first time. So, um, you know, well, we're going to need all 11 guys on the field to, to play their very best because they're really good at what they do, and that's going to be quite a challenge for us. Matt Ionetis is one of those players that have played well in your defensive line, and I think this game is coming down to the battle inside the trenches. Your defensive line has to get a good pressure on Garrett Gilbert, but what has Matt Ionetis brought to this football team so far through this season? Well, I think what's happened to Matt is, is, is he's kind of been thrust into the spotlight, and, and he's brought some pass rush, and he's brought some toughness. toughness. You know, he's, he's a rugged player. Uh, he can defend the run, and he can get to the quarterback. So uh, he's one of those guys that maybe we weren't counting on a ton early. He was kind of a, a backup and a limited role guy, and he's been thrust into a starting role, and, and he's taken that and run with it. So, uh, you know, he'll, he'll have his hands full this weekend with a, a really good offensive line, and we need Matt to come through along with the rest of the defensive linemen. How tough is it to change the mindset of this team where you go up against Army and almost every play in that game it was run and you prepared to stack the box in that game. You saw five or six defensive linemen on the field at one time and now you're going up against a passing team where they throw the ball anywhere from 44 to 70 times a game. Is that tough in preparation this week in practice when you go from a week ago playing a running team and now you play a team that usually only passes the football? Yeah, you know, we uh, in, in the past when I worked with uh, Coach Golden, we were here, we played Navy and Army every year. We referred to it as the option hangover, you know, the week after. Uh, your guys, you know, they just, it took them a while to, to get used to speed again. And, and now you combine that with the fact that not only are we playing a throwing team, we're playing the eighth best throwing team in the nation in SMU. So, you know, you have to you have to transition quickly. And, and that first drive could come at you fast, and you have to just get it get adjusted to their speed and their game speed. And, and while it's never easy, you know, it's what's in front of us. It's what, it's what needs to be done. When you go up against a very good passing team, the best way to keep their quarterback off the field is to have your offense go on some long drives. How important is it that your offense gets some long drives this week and walks away with six points instead of a few field goal attempts? Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, our offense has to find a way to run the ball. And that's it. You know, I really challenge them this week because we, we haven't run it the way we've wanted to and consistently. And so we're going to have to, you know, as you said, go on long drives, chew the clock, make them sit, give our defense a chance to rest, and at the same time score points. You know, you need to, you need to be able to match score for score with a team, you know, like SMU's. Well, Matt, we really appreciate the time today. Thanks a lot, and good luck up against SMU this week. Yeah, let, let me say this to you, Zach. I just want to make sure I said this to you. Now, I, uh, I appreciate how good of a job you guys do. Even when I'm not on the show, I, I, I enjoy just the fact that I could even listen to Coach Ellison last week. So what you guys are doing there is fantastic. You guys are, I don't know, if I, there can't be any other college, you know, uh, radio host and station that does as good a job with sports as you guys are. So I appreciate it. Well, Coach, we definitely appreciate the kind words, and let's keep on seeing those victories. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, brother. Coach Matt Rule there, Temple University Football Coaches Show, each and every Thursday. we got to take a quick break here on the main event. Great compliment right there from Matt Rule. Uh, such a good guy, and I'm glad to finally see him get his first win. So we'll take a quick break, and we'll be back here on the main event right after these short messages.